I spent 168 bucks on this box of 16 SLR and DSLR cameras. Let's get right into it. Very well packed. All right, very well packed. I'm gonna go ahead and set it on the ground and we'll get started on the first cam. All right, we got two cameras in here. It's a two pack. First up, we've got a Minolta X700 35mm SLR film cam. And this is a 35 millimeter film camera with a multi-function back. And unfortunately, I don't have a battery to test this particular camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the test for later uh, pile that I'm gonna make. Because all of these cameras that I'm gonna go through are untested, you just never know. Um, half of them could be broken. 90% um, of them could be working. Uh, it kind of runs the gamut, just depending upon uh, how they originally compiled. So um, I won't assign a value on this one. Our target on this video from this $168 buy is gonna be 400 bucks. So hopefully by the end of the video, we'll hit that $400 target. That was in that same one. Oh yeah, uh, the Canon T50. Uh, this is a pretty basic 35 millimeter film camera as well. Um, and went away with a lot of the manual controls. And this camera is a little bit different in that it uses AA batteries, but the problem that I've seen with this camera is a lot of the times a AA battery has been in there for many years. And in this case, we've got a AA battery that looks like it's fused to become part of the battery tray. Let me see if I can get it out. So I'll try to work on that one a little bit later. Uh, if this was in working condition, not a ton of value. Uh, I've sold a number of working T50s with pretty basic lenses in the $40 to $60 range but unfortunately no value on this one either. So 0 for 2 so far. What I specialize in is digital. Um, so my testing and the way that I go about film cameras, certainly not as advanced as people that specialize in film. Um, but I do my best with what I have. Ooh, yeah. I saw this one in the picture and it's uh, the big reason as to why I went ahead and uh, bid on this lot. And I won all of these at an auction, online auction. D300 DSLR camera. Big beefy cam that Nikon released uh, 10, 15 years ago. Um, really great camera. I believe this was the uh, model right after the D200, which was much vaunted. Um, and I've sold probably four or five dozen D300s in the last seven years. Looks to be in pretty good shape. It has an LCD protector here. So maybe the LCD underneath is in good shape. Let's take a look. So this uses, oh, the bottom looks good too. This uses the Nikon ENL3 battery, I believe. Um, let me go grab one real quick. It's not even the right battery. Dirty rascal. Had a Canon instead of a Nikon. That won't work. All right, got the Nikon and ENL3. They look almost identical, so I got confused for a second. We've got the top powering on. There's the menu. So you can see when it's on, it's that cloud, slight cloudiness under the LCD is not even really that visible. Well, this is really cool. Uh, the last bigger Nikon uh, D series camera that I got in was the Nikon full frame D750. And I'm still shooting with that. I actually just went out and shot uh, a few birds this morning. Uh, but the D300, uh, I believe this is a 12 megapixel sensor and it uses um, compact flash for memory. Put the memory card in. Fortunately, a lot of these DSLRs from Canon to Nikon to Sony menus remain fairly similar. So for me to go through and use a bunch of do dozens of different menus uh, throughout the days and weeks whenever I'm testing cameras isn't too, hard, too challenging. Uh, just a little bit of a learning curve to start. Because I know a lot of you out there uh, do shoot a variety of cameras. Do you have just pure Nikon gear, pure Canon gear, pure Sony gear, pure Panty gear? Or do you have a mix of brands? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Curious. I myself shoot generally a pretty wide variety from Samsung to Nikon to Sony to Pentax. Uh, because I get so many cameras in, I'm able to test a lot of different brands and models that I honestly never would have bought. Uh, and that's made this job really, really, quite frankly, pretty dang fun over the last seven years. Okay, let's go ahead and put a lens on here. I'm gonna grab a Nikon 18-55 to that I just have handy for testing. 
So what I'm testing for here is just to make sure that the autofocus is working and uh, I'm going to make sure that uh, everything looks good uh, from a focus screen perspective and uh, that the actual pictures look good. If the pictures look out of focus, it's probably because the viewfinder is not set up correctly. So you can just adjust it with the screw here. Uh, many DSLRs have that option for viewfinder adjustment. So the pictures are looking good. Really actually pretty happy with the pictures that I took just with this 18 to 55 basic kit lens. Uh, the color accuracy is really great. And the details that I was able to get just with this basic zoom lens pretty impressed with. Uh, a lot of stuff blooming right now um, and the javelina are eating those little acorn type nuts that are falling off of our tree. It's a time of abundance right now in southern Arizona, that's for dang sure. I just also checked the shutter count of this and it's 67,000. So quite a few pictures taken with this, still super snappy, takes good pictures and I think the shutter life of this camera is 150 to 175,000. So should still have quite a bit of life left. Body alone value, when you look at that shutter count on websites like eBay in the United States, you'd be looking at a value of around $150 if you pair it with a charger, USB cable, and a memory card. And keep in mind, that's just a price and a snapshot of time. So the price of this in a year or two may go down, may go up, uh, just depends upon interest and uh, scarcity. So that's a good one. Uh, and I'm really happy that that was working because if this was in parts condition, the value would be closer to 40 to 50. Most of the time, the cameras that I buy aren't uh, this well packaged. It's like getting into Fort Knox here. Ah, yes. Canon D60. Super early, I think 3 megapixel DSLR camera. I actually made a video on this on a different one that I had uh, like four or five months ago. Uh, when this camera came out, it was actually a $2,000 MSRP. Pretty crazy. Missing the side panel here, and it has some oxidation uh, on the hot shoe. And this uses a Canon BP511 battery, which looks very similar to that Nikon ENL3. And LCD's got some wire. But we've got both the top and the rear working. There's no live view on this camera, so you have to use a viewfinder to take a picture. Let me get a lens that'll work for this uses Canon EF lenses, no EFS lenses on this body. So you're looking for a red dot there. And I just put on a 35 to 80 millimeter for testing. Go ahead and take a couple pictures. Hopefully it works. Flash pops. And let's see if the focus is working. It is. Cool. We got a working camera here. This camera came out, I believe in 2002. So this is a 22 year old DSLR camera uh, that is working. Uh, I recently took a copy of this camera, the Canon D60 out with a couple different lenses uh, up into the Canyon. And I'll show some pictures up on the screen of what those look like as well. Pretty limited autofocus with this very early generation Canon DSLR. Um, but once you get past that, I was pretty pleased with it. Okay. So body only on this Canon D60 with the missing door and with some of the wear on the top, I'll try to clean that up a little bit before I get it listed. If you put a charger with this and a memory card, you'd be looking at a value in its current condition right around $60 on this Canon D60. Not a 60D, which is a much newer DSLR camera. This is the D60. Okay, let's try this one. Oh man. This is really... So we've got a Canon Rebel K2 here, uh, which is a 35 millimeter SLR film camera released by Canon uh, in the 80s, 90s, maybe even through early 2000s, made in Taiwan. Uh, it's got a super tacky grip, so super sticky. If you put any sort of hair there, like dog hair or something, it would just stick to it. So there's a number of different cleaning solutions you can use to clean off rubber grips that have gotten super tacky on older Canon and Nikon film and DSLR cameras. Uh, what I'd like to use is this Mother's Back to Black Plastic Restore, um, and it works pretty well. I've seen people use alcohol uh, and a variety of other types of solutions. It's generally not a super fast fix because you got to really wipe away those layers that have built up. 
So I've applied just a little bit onto the cloth here, and then I'm just going to apply it. Cleaning cams with Kev. Maybe that's what this channel should be called. My name is Kevin, by the way. Uh, I've been doing this YouTube channel now for a little over a year. I've uh, made several dozen videos during that time, uh, a lot about kind of the daily life of uh, selling cameras and a little bit of the history of how I started and uh, why I'm still selling cameras after all these years. I've got some black stuff on my fingers now. Okay, so now that I'm basically done, you can get an idea of what it looks like. It looks basically the same as before. Uh, just not super tacky. So hopefully this camera works and uh, that wasn't a waste of time. But I use the Tenergy for both CR2 and CR123 batteries when I'm doing film camera testing. Two in there, let's see if it turns on. The on off toggle is on the top. It does turn on. We can actually use the same lens that we tested the D60 with, an EF lens that was originally sold probably as some sort of film camera kit. So we've got it on now, and I'm just gonna test to see if the focus is working and the flash fires. There's no film in this, and I don't have any film to film test these. Autofocus is working, the flash pops up, and the flash fires. Value-wise of just the body, the Rebel K2 body, um, I'll get it cleaned up just a little bit more as well to get all any of that remaining black stuff off. Uh, you're looking at a value with the batteries of right around 40 bucks. Um, with a lens, you'd be looking at closer, depending on the lens, of 60 to 80. So that's great. Next up, looks like there might be a couple in here. I'd be really careful with the, the blade here. Of two cannons and a Minolta. I'll go ahead and start with this one. I'll put the other two in the box and we'll get to those in a second. We've got a Canon. 500N, quartz date, 35 millimeter film camera. Also with a little bit of a sticky tacky grip, not as nearly as bad as that prior one. So it's got two old CR123 batteries in here. So we've got it, batteries in, we've got power on, and we're gonna use that same lens. I should just keep it over here, huh? And we're gonna go through the same quick testing and make sure nothing weird through the viewfinder. Bit of dust through the viewfinder, probably on the focus screen. That looks good. So pretty similar value on this uh, 500. Uh, you'd be looking at right in the $40 range uh, with a body cap and new batteries. And it is tested, but not film tested. What do we got here? Another Canon. We have an EOS Rebel S or EOS Rebel S. You can say it both ways. I've had Canon reps that say it both ways. So whatever your heart desires on that front. Where to the top buttons, as you can see there. Yeah, to a CR5. Let me go grab a two CR5 real quick. Got our placement. Power. Let's go ahead and put the lens on. And let's see what it does, yeah. Flash fires. So we've got another working camera here. This one has a little bit more wear, and this is more of a plastic body uh, construction. I believe this was late 80s, early 90s, kind of in the Andre Agassi era of Canon, and uh, still working after all these years. So I'll put a body cap on that, get a little bit of the residue off the top of the camera, and I've sold this camera a fair amount, normally with a lens, but body only, you'd be looking at a value in the $35 range. With that camera, we hit 325 in projected value, and the values that I'm giving are just based on uh, rough estimates based on my own sales history, as well as where the market's at in the United States at this point. If you're in a different country, uh, prices may vary wildly depending on tax and imports and uh, overall quantity of cameras in your market. Ugh, Minolta? Minolta 360 SI, and this uses the Sony uh, A-mount as well for lenses. Gotta get a coin to open the battery. There we go, power 
on top shows full battery. There's like a band visible. Oh, just turned off. <sighs> so, turned it on. Um, the screen pops on. Whenever I try to take a picture using the shutter button, uh, the camera automatically turns off. Turn it back on, turns on. Turns off. And I just tried this with another lens as well, and it's doing the same thing. So there's something going on with this body, not entirely sure what, but unfortunately for me, it's not gonna have any value. So I'm not gonna put any value on this Minolta body. That's a bummer. The only downside to packaging this well is it takes me so much longer to actually get it to get it out. Ouch! Ooh, hit my funny bone on that one. Got a Nikon N4004 and another Nikon. With the Decision Master System. I haven't really shot with the N4004. Not super familiar with this model. See what the battery situation looks like. A weird battery tray. Got one vertical, one horizontal. Never really seen that before. It's unusual. Got an icon compatible, uh, what have we got here? Quantre, just for testing. There's some dust visible through the viewfinder. Appears to be working fine. Uh, Shutter's firing. Is the flash firing? Oh, flash is broken. Yeah, flash is definitely broken. But it does have a hot shoe. Um, so if you test that and you find a external hot shoe and that works, then this camera should be fully operational. Um, but unfortunately, that will impact the value quite a bit. So kind of a nominal value to start with on the N4004, you would have been looking at a value in the 30 to $50 range in good working shape. Um, with the broken flash that's not firing, uh, probably a value of in the 15 to $20 range, more if I found an external flash to pair it with. So I'll go ahead and say 20 bucks on this N4004 because it is working, just got the flash problem. Okay, got another one here, uh, N8008. Assuming this came after the N4004. Uh, condition looks decent. I like the viewfinder style. They incorporate that on a lot of their nicer uh, DSLR cameras too. Circular viewfinder. Turn it off and I think this is... I'm gonna get that screw out of the bottom. Oh, wow. Oh man, this is some of the worst I've ever seen. Yeah, it just cracked. Look at this. Just cracked and got exploded. Old battery corrosion everywhere. Probably happened 20, 30 years ago. And uh, that's a bummer. No value on this N8008. Pretty similar value to the one before, a little bit more. Whee! Got a bunch of cannons in here. We'll start with this one. And I'll put the other two in the box. Oh, this is the Canon Rebel XT. The Canon Rebel XT DSLR camera. And this is the most popular DSLR camera that I have ever sold and maybe ever will sell because they made it in such quantity and it's available in such quantity as a result on the secondary used market that even after the 20 years of when this was released, almost 20 years, uh, this camera is everywhere. So it uses the Canon MB2L battery. I've got a replacement right here. I doubt the one in there is working. And uses compact flash for memory. Let's see if it powers on first. It does power on. No live view on this, just uses that little viewfinder there. And uh, I've shot with this camera quite a bit with a variety of lenses over the years. And uh, it's an eight megapixel sensor, crop sensor. Oh, it's got a memory card in there too. Well, that makes life even easier. The pretty limited autofocus, um, 
But uh, this is a really good camera to learn on and it's a good camera to take still photography with. It doesn't actually have a video, any video functionality, just, just stills. And it gives you a variety of adjustments from ISO to white balance that if you're a new photographer, just getting out of the auto mode um, makes, it, uh, makes it a decent experience to learn on. Let me grab the same lens, the old trusty. Uh, the only difference is that this mount will take both EF and EFS lenses as opposed to just EF. Flash is firing and the body looks to be in overall decent shape. Got wear to the front grip, super common. And everything else looks to be holding up okay. No bent hot shoe mount on top. It's one of the things you wanna watch out for. Uh, but I sell this body a lot, like I said, normally with the kit 18 to 55, but body only, uh, value is gonna be around 45 bucks. So not a ton of value in this, uh, in this older DSLR camera, but brings back a lot of memories. Okay, next up. We've got Canon Rebel XS DSLR camera. And this was released a year or two after the Rebel XT, after the Rebel XTI, and before the XSI. And I believe this is a 10 megapixel DSLR camera. Pretty popular, not as popular because they didn't make it for as long as the Canon Rebel XT, but still popular. Switch to regular SD as opposed to compact flash and uses the Canon LPE5 battery. We got power. Sometimes I've noticed with this battery, this LPE5, you have to make sure it's seated properly in that battery tray more than other cameras, otherwise the camera won't even power on. So if it's not powering on and the battery is charged, that might be the problem. Uh, I'm gonna try a different lens with this actually. I've got a really cool 24 millimeter pancake lens that I really enjoy shooting with. Um, it's an EFS mount lens, wide angle on a full frame body and uh, closer to kind of what the human eye sees on a APS-C size sensor like the Rebel XS. Love this lens. That looks great. Delightful. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this out and get some pictures taken with this Canon Rebel XS so you can get an idea of what this uh, almost 15 year old DSLR camera can do. Okay, um, so yeah, pictures turned out quite good with this Rebel XS. Again, like the Rebel XT, a little bit limited in that autofocus, especially with this uh, little 24 millimeter lens. There's gonna be a little blur on the outside edges, but the center is nice and crisp and in focus. The Rebel XS body is gonna have a little more value than the Rebel XT, but still not a ton. Uh, you're looking at a value of the Rebel XS body in the $70 range in the United States. If you pair it with a charger and a USB cable. And with this camera, we just went over $400 in projected value and projected sales. Uh, as you can see, if a few of these, especially that D300 hadn't have been working, it would have been a different story. Um, so there is a little bit of inherent risk in buying untested lots like this, but I kind of like the thrill of the chase and the gamble. Uh, makes life interesting. Uh, let's see what we got for the next camera. I think it's another Canon. It is, it's actually the same, it's a twin. We got twinsies. And for those of you that didn't know, I'm actually a twin. And if my twin is watching, hi Ryan, hope you're having a good day. Sometimes he watches these videos but only makes it a few minutes in, so uh, probably not. So let's see if this Rebel XS body is working. And it's gonna be as simple as just swapping out the lens here on this one and then taking the battery out. I'm assuming it's an old battery here and putting the new battery in. Doop -doop -doop -doop. This one's missing the rubber viewfinder cap right there. And I buy those kind of wholesale in lots of 10 um, to replace these if I'm able to, because that's so often missing on uh, older digital cameras and uh, SLR film cameras. And it's uh, pretty inexpensive to make the camera look a little bit better. It does power on. We're gonna see if the focus is working and the flash fires. Flash is firing and focus is also working. Guess what? Same estimate on this one since it's the same camera. Uh, 70, around $70 in value on this. 
for our second Rebel XS. Oh, almost had a hernia getting to that one. Two cannons and a Minolta. Start with that one. We've got a Canon EOS Rebel XS. So this was the version that came out just before that S2 that we were looking at before that was working. Looks to be in decent shape. New batteries. A little bit of wear to the front, but not sticky. Two CR123 batteries on this one. And we've got, uh, looks like we got power on as well. We do. Let me pull out the old trusty. 35 to 80, and uh, let's give it a go. Yep. Autofocus is working and the flash fired. Okay. So no film to test this, so not film tested, but the flash is firing and the autofocus is working. And the value on this one is going to be in that same ballpark, about 35 bucks if you pair this with a, lens, a body cap and a battery. What the? <laughs> another twin? It's another twin! We had two twins on this episode. Got another Canon Rebel XS. You know what's really even stranger is the two twins before those DSLR cameras were Rebel XS, and this is the 35mm Rebel XS. How bizarre. Okay, well, that'll make it easy to test. I'll just swap the batteries out from this one into this one. Got power. Power on the top. Grab the lens again. Feel like I'm living in uh, Groundhog Day. Give it the old test. Now that we know what it should look like. Okay, looks good. Just like the other one. Same value too, 35 bucks on this camera. Nice. So that's cool. All the twinsies are working. All right, we've got the one left from there, which is gonna be this one. And that is a Minolta Maxim 5000, 35 millimeter film camera. Sold a few of these as well. Often we've got battery corrosion issues. But this copy appears to be, at least physically, in quite nice shape. Uh, front grip has wear. This is often discolored or flaking, or in some cases, completely missing. Um, let me open it with my coin. This has been a pretty good box so far, actually, uh, value-wise. Certainly, some of these will take a little bit longer to sell um, than a lot of the DSLR cameras that I normally sell. Um, so normally when you have something that's going to take longer to sell, the value has to be higher because you have to hold on to it for a longer period of time. So we've got a clean battery tray, and this guy actually uses AAA batteries. So I'm going to have to go grab some AAAs. I'll be right back. Don't tend to use a ton of AAA batteries because in the digital camera world, it's largely cheap uh, off-brand uh, point-and-shoot digital cameras that use AAA batteries. Oh, I didn't notice that. We've got some bleed on the top LCD. These are always a pain when you go through all this work and then uh, you try to turn it on and it doesn't even turn on. <laughs> so you either put the batteries in wrong or the, the camera is actually dead. Okay, we got it turned on here. Black bleed there through the top LCD. Pretty common on older Minolta SLR film cameras from my experience. Let me grab a lens. I'm going to use a Minolta. Ah! Whew! Almost lost the light there. Ah! We're going to put a 35 to 105 millimeter Minolta zoom lens on here. And let's, uh, let's take a look-see. Woo! Lens is noisy. Oh, shutter fires. The lens is uh, working well, and the body's working well as well. Autofocus is working, um, and there's an autofocus manual toggle right here. So I'll flip it to manual, and let's do a little bit of manual work here. Okay. All right. Turn it back off. So uh, value on the Maxim 5000 isn't great. What I like to do normally is pair this with uh, an extra Minolta lens that I have, because uh, I tend to have a lot of extra surplus Minolta lenses hanging around. 
uh, I would pair it with one of those, but body only with that top LCD issue. Uh, you'd be looking at a value probably in the 25, 30 range for body only. If you paired it with a lens like this 35 to 105, probably closer to 50, maybe a little bit more. Last thing that we have here, I think is lenses. It's gotta be, right? We've got a Sigma 28 to 70. We've got a Minolta MD, Celtic 25 millimeter F 2.8 lens, which appears to be in rather nice shape. Look at that puppy. So that's a pretty cool little wide angle lens and uh, looks really nice. Glass looks great. I'm not seeing any haze or mold visible inside the glass. And barrel moves smoothly. Blades are moving good. This is in really, really nice shape. And I've sold a number of these 28 millimeter lenses uh, for the Minolta MD mount. This won't work on a Sony Alpha. So this is a pretty unusual lens and because of its relative scarcity, uh, the value of this is gonna be right around $85. That's a great pickup. I didn't even see that in the picture. And then this other lens, the Sigma here, is an older uh, 28 to 70 millimeter Sony Alpha mount or Minolta mount. Ah, autofocus is working on this lens. Uh, this is not a super in-demand lens, not a lot of standalone value, so I actually won't include a value on this because I'll probably kit it out with another 35 millimeter SLR, either Sony or Minolta that I'm gonna list. Um, but maybe 15, 20 bucks on this lens. Actually quite heavy. So that's it. Uh, that was a really cool box. Different from what I normally do. Um, if you wanna see anything more like that, let me know in the comments down below. Sorry, I wasn't able to actually film test all of those. I have limited time and I go through a lot of cameras. As always, get out there, have some fun, make some memories and uh, take some good pictures.